So it's like you set a boundary and that's supposed to be good and you know it's supposed to be good, but then your whole body's like, okay, then what? Like, what are you doing? I want to continue on working on acceptance because I think that besides the boundaries, I think acceptance is also um, a challenge that I'm actively working through. Um, like full on acceptance and having to rewrite my story. Now, you know what it is that you want, you know how you want your life to look like, like you've already had the vision. Don't be afraid to get into the valley to do that work. It won't look cute. It won't look like a notable profession at the beginning. It won't be easy, but do the work and God will get you to where you wanted to be in now, I have to do that in order. Um, and I say that without saying too much. Over the weekend, I decided to go zero contact. So we are at zero contact now. Um, it's just the best move. It's the best move. I just have to move accordingly, and I have to let people suffer the consequences of their actions. No empathy. Definitely, I'm here to enjoy life. I'm not here to suffer. I'm not here to... to... <laughs> Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, to your family. I'm wishing you guys so much abundance for this year, 2022. I mean, 2021 was hectic to say the least, right? I mean, like we just watched a little bit of like what I was going through in 2021, but you know what? Like I literally wouldn't take any of it back because it brought me to you guys and it brought you guys to me and there's like 700 of you here now and that is no small feat i am so happy for this community that i've created and like the goal is just to keep getting bigger and bigger but in the meantime if you are new here my name is stephanie this is just a video journal of me raising myself while i'm trying to raise my daughter we are living in charlotte and this year is my chapter two so chapter one you guys got a little pre you up at the beginning it was a rough rough okay I was going through it I definitely was um you know moving to a new city two well one new city and one old city but just two big moves leaving a relationship becoming a single mom trying to navigate like who am I now like what do I do redefining who I am redefining what I do and how I do it um and then just like trying to find my footing again it's it was a shit show. This is my life and I'm the main character. It was a lot, but I met a lot of new people. Um, you know, I discovered a lot more about myself, discovered what I do like, what I don't like, and we're here now. We're in the chapter two and I'm really excited for the chapter two. I know for me, um, I'm tired. Actually guys, like I just started, um, working out today was my day one i'll probably have like 10 more day ones this year but like today was my day one and i'm getting into like drinking these protein smoothies i guess these are really the key because what happens is the second i start working out i also get exponentially hungrier so then i'm like what's the point of me like working out if all i'm doing is just eating more so the trick that i never subscribed to was to have a smoothie so two seconds hold on Oh, she's thick. I'm trying to think too though, so you know, so we understand, so we see each other. Anyway, yeah, so this year I am really, really trying to get the life that I was mourning. I was finding myself talking about all this healing and doing all this work to just get back to myself, whatever that self was, you know. But I'm realizing that I didn't want to get back to myself. I wanted to get to what I saw for myself back then, right? Like I had a specific life I wanted to live, a specific way I wanted to feel. And I thought that that was over for me because I had chosen the wrong partner. I'm now a mom. Um, 
and not only am I a mom, I'm a mom by myself. So how could I get to that life? How could I get to those like successes that I thought I was gonna get to? Y'all might look at me and think, oh, she's nothing special. Well, let me tell you something. This, this is the foundation. And once I get my buccal fat removal, my eyebrow lift, my slight forehead reduction, a non-invasive rhinoplasty, jaw filler, interior eyebrow micro-threading, go to the gynecologist, get Beats by Dre, it's over. And to keep it a buck, this is what my successes used to look like. I thought that I was going to get go to law school. I thought that my success was gonna be me going into education, um, um, like edu like education law, right? I literally used to be like, I'm gonna be secretary of education. And like, I thought because I didn't have a partner or the right partner, I couldn't live that life anymore. I just had to like put it on the back, um, put it on the back burner and just like make sure my daughter gets to do whatever she needs to do in life and I'll be there to support her and all whatever. Just really forgetting about myself or telling myself, girl, you missed your train, right? And so I had to, in, in all that healing, in all that who am I, what am I gonna do, whatever, whatever, a lot happened to show me that I can have um, something I'm passionate about, which is education and education reform. Like I really do love that, but is that my identity? Like is that where I really, really wanna leave my mark in the world? Am I really going to reach people in the way that I want to reach people in, in, a, in like a political sphere? I don't think so, right? Because at the end of the day, no matter how good you set out to be and the good you set out to do, politics always win. Politics get in the way of it. I mean, like, look at AOC. We had such high hopes for, for the girl, right? I had high hopes for her and I feel like she's fallen short and I try to remember that she's fallen short because of the sphere that she's in. It probably isn't her, but again, the people I wanna touch are right here. The things that I want to talk about and I'm able to talk about without um, worrying about how to say it, what to say it, when to say it, how to do it, we're right here, right? Like I, I somehow stumbled into who I want to see, be seen by and the things that I want to, to um, invite into my life. And again, like I just, I don't know, 2021 was tough as fuck, but I'm happy for it. I, it's just derailed me in a good way. I thought I, I should be looking for what's next, what's next, what's next. I'm not gonna be able to get to what's next because this person is like completely damaged my life and completely taken away like my motivation for myself and I can't get to such and such anymore but it was really like a sit down, rearrange and what is really important to you? What is it that you really wanna do? So I wanted to do those things in order to create an impact and I'm still creating an impact in a different way and in a way that actually fulfills me so much more. I love running my mouth. So like, <laughs> this is natural, this is normal, right? I was also thinking about getting a sticker <laughs> on my G -top. And I've always been like a person who's really open with my stories, open with what's going on with me. I really do find that's how I like connect with anyone I've met. I know, you know, it's the popular thing to be like, you know, you gotta watch out who you, you know, who you're telling your story to, who you, you know, I don't, I don't really, I'm a private person, I'm a whatever, whatever. And I'm like, that's, that's well and good. That's cute for you. Yes, certain things like I do think, excuse me, certain things I do think you should keep to yourself. And you know, not everything is for everyone's ears, you know what I'm saying? But I have always found that because I am so open to relate, or excuse me, because I am so open, I, it's easier for me to have people relate to me or for me to relate to someone else. I do not like that feeling, like when I'm opening up and, or having a vulnerable moment or even crying and the person is just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like no, this is an invitation for you to open up a little bit as well. Like, come on, like I hate that. Like my, my um, uh, what do you call it? My love language is definitely like, of, uh, acts of service, I love physical touch. So it's like if someone's crying, I don't care if you're a stranger to me, I'm going to hug you. Like, And I kind of want the same back. And if I can't hug you, I definitely want us to, to be able to, in conversation, hug each other. Like what I'm going through, what I have gone through, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to share it. I'm going to, you know, 
whatever. It's like, it's for everyone to witness because we are all going through something. And sometimes those things overlap, right? Those things like touch each other. What I may be going through, and you know, this is like real anecdotes, things that I have gone through that I have shared, you guys have like immediately run to my DMs to tell me like, oh my God, girl, like I can't believe like you went through this too. Like you don't look like someone who, got, who, who would go through this or I wouldn't know how to share my story or I don't know what to do if I can even talk about what's going on with me because so and so and such and such. And it's like, y'all, we're each other's witness to what's going on and i feel like again the more we talk about what's going on the more we're like pulling up the next woman the next mother the next friend into being like look shit is gonna happen but i've moved through it here's how i've moved through it look at my example you go you follow this example add your twist to it you might be able to do it better in a quicker time right and like that's the impact that i want to leave pulling someone up behind me and then they'll pull up the next person behind them. Y'all be weak in the knees, stand up. Stand up. Because I'm not gonna stop talking about what's going on with me. I'm not gonna stop talking about how hard it is to be a mom and like be transparent about how hard it is to really like find your way in life when you are someone who just thought you had life planned out and then that's where i am with things so this is my chapter two and you know a lot of new stuff has already been happening for me um the first thing i got a new car so i'm gonna put that up here so you guys can see i like i mean truth be told i had a wonderful car before i had a mercedes before nice you know situation but my baby's father actually bought that car for me and <clears throat> may seem like not this train what may seem like you know or should have been it should have felt like such a wonderful gift and like this like i've got this and blah blah blah. it didn't really feel like that like i'm gonna i'm gonna tell y'all like i don't know if you've ever gotten this, a gift from someone that felt more like reparations like you know what i mean like someone just got you something and it instead of feeling like oh my god like thank you like this is a sentimental something it really felt like you're not gonna be able to say i never did anything for you and I just feel like I never let myself get connected to that car. It never really felt like, you know, it just felt like a duty being done rather than like a real true gift for me. And I've always felt a way about it. And, you know, so I was able to use that for like monetary gain. Cause right now, y'all, if you are looking to sell a car, now is the time. I went on Carvana and I basically got back like the value of the car. So look at that what we do it okay what what the devil meant for bad okay what the devil meant for evil you know the rest because I was able to get back the value of that car pay up some bills pay things up in advance for myself so that I'm able to really continue to do what it is that I want to do without having too much stress and I was also able to get another car a car that I wanted a car that I selected and I just feel so so much better about it i'm loving that for myself um yeah 2022 is definitely not stopping with the me to me as long as i can do it as long as i can figure it out um and then you know i also got some like advice and advice but it was definitely kind of like a get out of my head little push from once again my girl janae um she's definitely been you know side note we met online like i have not yet even like had a chance to like be shoulder to shoulder with my girl but that is my friend down like it, it she is my family and i'll talk a little bit more about that later but i just keep bringing her up and i'm like i'm not sure if you guys know who i'm talking about i'll link her youtube down here and her maybe her instagram but she is just such a light y'all and okay i'm rambling about her but i'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about her later but I say that to say she, you know, we were like on the phone and I was kind of like iffy about whether I should get this car or not. Like, I just felt like I was do doing too much for myself. Like, I'm like, damn, like I really need to be a little bit more like, you know, to like calm down. Like, I don't need to be spending this. I don't need to get this. And she was like, you know what though? Get it within means, within reason. Get it and it'll push you to maintain it. You'll wake up every day knowing that you have something to like get to. You have something to maintain. You have something to, you know, whatever to work for. So it's going to keep you motivated. And honestly, I've really been living by that ever since she said it. So again, within reason, within 
you know, like not like throwing myself into like ample amounts of debt or anything like that. I, I like that. I, I do, I like that in the moment living. Like our brains can't even handle this like fake planning ahead thing that we're, we're doing. Like we, no, like we live in the moment, make the best of the moment, and then you just figure it out from then. Uh, uh, uh. What's going on? And it's been making me happy. That's my source of happiness right now. Like getting for myself what I would like to get for myself, the things that I was waiting for someone else to get for me, um, whether they be my needs, like things I actually need in order to survive, in order to feel loved, in order to feel important. I've been giving those to myself and the things that I want. Bag, a car, this little trip here, this whatever, whatever. I'll be doing all of that this year. I'm saying yes to the things I need and hell yes to the things I want. So watch out. So there's that. Um, that's new. I've got a lot of new uh, apartment stuff as well. Um, I'll definitely do like an apartment, um, like a small little tour. Um, my room is still really not, I mean, I feel like my room is done. I just feel like I might need like something above my bed. It's a lot of white space in here. Uh, but the living room is really, really coming together. I've updated my Amazon store. If you guys wanna check that out, like mostly anything you see in my videos, even like the stuff you see back here, minus this dresser. A lot of people ask me about this dresser from my Instagram, but I actually got it at like a Miami mom and pop shop. So, you know, and I'm not giving, you know, those girls that are like, I got it from a boutique. No, like I'm, I'm being serious. I did not buy this at like anywhere else that I could suggest for you to get, go get it. I got it off the floor and somewhere in Miami. So I'm not lying, I swear. Um, but other than that, anything else you do see on the, Anything else you do see on the dresser here and then like in the living room, if I am filming out there and you see it, it is likely on my Amazon uh, storefront. So then that's always linked at the bottom. So you can go ahead and check that out. Um, yeah, so new car, new apartment, parenting. How is that going? Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> yes, sir, I am. It's going. Um, Cadence is three years. Hold on, sorry, I do. Um, she's three now, which comes with its own like new set of like headaches. Um, it's wonderful to see her growing. Like we went to the doctor the other day, and she this was the first time that she's actually been like on the growth chart. She's always been small. Well, not really. From birth, she was kind of chunky, but you know they lose all that weight after a little bit. But she's always been much shorter. When people meet her, they're like surprised how tiny she is. But I'm like, I'm pretty small and I'm thin as well, so whatever. But she has always struggled to getting on the um, growth chart, which has always made me feel so much extra added pressure. That used to be such a point of contention in that relationship too because I felt like I was the only one like keeping all that pressure and like that guilt on myself. Like I was feeding this girl round the freaking clock, like never paying attention to what I'm eating, making sure she's eating all to go to the doctor and they're still like, she's at the same weight or like, are you, you know, talking to me? Like, I don't know how to feed a child and I'm like, I swear she's eating. Um, but yeah, this is the first time in her three years of life that she is on the growth chart. She's like doing really well. She's always been doing well, but you know, they like to have something to be able to measure, whatever. But I was really happy for that. That was definitely a parenting win for me. And I was so proud of her. Like she took her shots like a champ, like her three-year-old shots. Um, and yeah, she's just gaining a lot more personality. And because she's gaining a lot more personality, she's also expressing herself a lot more. Anyway, you're a punk. You can never be like me. You can never try to beat me. Nothing. You're a punk. I'm her. Meanwhile, you're sitting there being a zapped. I'm not scared of you. What's up? And this is where it gets, you know, really puts to the test that like gentle parenting that I want to be doing. Um, I subscribe to gentle parenting hard, 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 hard. And I, you know, have to study a lot of it um, because it's not natural. Like I did not grow up being gently parented. I barely grew up being parented. But you know, it's like uh, I feel like even people who have gotten like a little like nicer parents. Oh my god, I don't mean to say like my mom wasn't nice. My mom was nice. My dad was nice as well. But there's just certain, you know, there's just certain short fuses. There's certain things they didn't take the time to like validate for me. 
So it's not as natural for me to do it for cadence. And so I definitely could see like the inner struggle within me. Um, like specifically when she asked me why for something, like I have to like, it takes a minute for my brain to be like, because I sick. You like, you know what I mean? Like, and I actually just take the moment and tell her the why, because I do remember when I was younger, I'm like, is it gonna kill them to just tell me why they want me to do something? It's not because I'm not gonna do it. Like, I just wanna know why. Like we, you know, as kids, you don't see past your toes. So it's helpful a lot of the times. And I feel like it also calms your nervous system to know what the, what the, um, product of your action is about to be. Like if I do this and I've never done it before, what is gonna happen? Can you let me know what's gonna happen so that I can feel more comfortable doing this? So these are the things I like have to like remind myself of my own childhood and then when I'm doing like reading or when I'm like on, actually I'm gonna link it here if you're interested in this, this girl, this lady woman, I follow on Instagram. Um, she just has like wonderful, wonderful tips on like how to have certain conversations with your child and of course like, you, they're skeletons of how to have the conversations or how to react in a moment. Um, but I do find myself like having to like practice them, practice and practice them. And then so that when I am in that moment, like I know what to say, like I know how to handle it. So it's made me much more empathetic because a three year old child is testing. It's very, very testing. And I don't know about your toddler, but my toddler, she gonna say what she gotta say and it's I want, listen, look at me. I want to be chill, but God has other plans for me, okay? Yeah, I'm getting, yeah. I guess, I guess that's me now. But I didn't think she was gonna do that so early. So it's very challenging whether, you know, to, to like what's the cutoff to, okay, you're expressing yourself, but okay, I still pay the bills, so watch your mouth, you know? So we're working on that, but it's just been, you know, we went through like Thanksgiving, Christmas, it was just us two, you know, we're really forming our family as just us two. And yeah, I'm loving it, I'm liking it. It's definitely not what I thought. Once again, a lot of not what I thought, but it's happening, I'm living through it, I'm making it work. So yeah, like I'm excited about that. Um, and by excited, I mean, I'm just excited to see how she continues to develop and like learn in new ways that I can help her develop uh, while at home. Um, one concern I do have though, I'm gonna talk about it. Do I talk about it now? I'm gonna talk about it another. I might talk about it a little later, but one concern I do have is how difficult like this, as a teacher, as a former teacher, I knew that the school system and getting your child to into a school is difficult, but damn. I've always, I've gone through a private school system, so my parents didn't really have difficulty. It's like, okay, if you have the money here, here, put your child here, you know, they're fine, whatever, whatever, fine. But I thought I was gonna stay away from private school with Cadence, and every day I kind of feel like I'm getting pushed to figure out a way to get her into private school. But we'll talk about that another time. But it is kind of sad. Education system is crumbling, crumbling. So for 2022, I did make like a bigger vision board. I did it like, you know, everyone else is doing their um, like digital vision boards, which, which was really cool. I liked it. I have mine on my computer desktop so I can really see like what it is that I'm working towards. But I also want to make smaller ones because I just feel like when you look at a big vision board like that, like it's just, it's nice to look at. It's cute, it's aesthetically pleasing, whatever. But for me, I find it really hard to look at something in such a macro term. I need it to be micro. So while those matter, the bigger picture matters, like I don't wanna underestimate the smaller steps it takes to like get to that bigger one. And I'd like to focus month by month on those smaller steps. So like, for example, on my um, vision board, I did put that like, I wanna be more, uh, like it's it just this person that looks really, really fit. What does that really mean in the day-to-day -day sense, right? So I did put for the month of January, I want to at least for three weeks, I'm giving myself three weeks of being fully active in the gym. So I think that's more of an attainable, tangible goal. Um, 
and then for like for money i want to put away three thousand dollars in savings this month right because my bigger one has just like this stack of money right like a lot of money whatever whatever yes i want to have a lot more money put away and make a lot more money this year but for this month i want to have three thousand dollars put away so those are like kind of like what my um, micro goals are looking like in order to fit in the macro of things um and i think i'm gonna continue moving that way and check the boxes off that way because then you know i just feel like um it just does better for your self-esteem and for your validation like seeing yourself actually accomplish something and then later on like at the end of the year you could step back and you're like oh okay i did it like i got there being a hottie who has depressive episodes is a full-time job, but I'm managing it. And technically, I'm the only one managing myself, which makes me a CEO, which makes me a boss, babe. I'm always winning. Um, you don't just leap, you know what I mean? You take small steps into getting there. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing for goals. Um, I don't really have anything that's like, yeah. No. My mine are pretty regular, regular. They're just for me. There's just things that I was definitely not able to pay attention to um, in 2021. So I'm going to get to them this year. Uh, and, you know, as we talk some more, I'll definitely share with you guys what I've got going on. Um, I ended the year with getting a, um, a deal that has not come out yet. So I don't want to talk too, too much about it, but I promised myself I would and I did. It literally took six months, but I did it, you know? And, um, and again, it didn't look like what I thought it would look like, but it was a step to what I am going to be, you know, attracting. My apologies. I couldn't hear what you said. It was a step to what I'm going to be attracting and dealing with this year. So I feel like I'm pretty set up. Um, I'm feeling just like grounded. And I haven't felt grounded like this for a very long time, even before someone came into my life and like, you know, completely did whatever they needed to do or they didn't have to, but they did. But I just feel like, again, I'm, I'm, I'm at a place where I'm grateful for that. Like last year, mm -mm, I felt old, I felt wronged, I felt like I needed redemption, I felt like you know, there was a lot of me having to pull myself up and I didn't want to pull myself up. And I was like, where's my support? Where's my help? Where's my, where am I getting my next from? But this year I feel like I'm, you know, I'm standing, I'm, I'm, I'm two feet down, but I'm not planted, right? Because planted would mean like, I can't go left. I can't go right. Like I'm, I'm static. I'm not static. I feel firmly on the ground because I can feel the ground beneath me. Um, and that makes me feel like I'm alive. I'm here, I survived something. And so now when opportunities are coming at me, when I have a problem, I know I can get through it now, right? Like the problem is the freaking opportunity rather than being a problem that knocks me on my ass now. And um, yeah, I just feel more flexible. I feel like more back to my, back inside my body. So I can't wait to see, you know, how I operate through life feeling this way because like I said I haven't felt this way in a really long time uh, yeah am I skinny yet mm. All right, guys, so don't hold me to it, but I'm really, really going to be, you know, doing my very best to commit to growing this YouTube channel. So if you know anyone who would be interested in the kind of content that I'm putting up, again, it's about healing myself, raising my child, really talking about getting out of toxic relationships, the aftermath of getting after, out of that toxic relationship. If you know anyone who'd be interested in things like that, make sure to share my YouTube channel with them. Otherwise, I will also be committing to, not otherwise, well, and I will also be committed to growing this channel by being more present for you guys, right? Like you guys want to watch videos, so I'll be producing more videos. Guys, keep in mind, I'm a single mommy.
you know, with not much help. Like she's at daycare, but even those hours are super short, super fleeting. But I'm telling myself that my goal is to make three videos a week for you guys. So my schedule would look like Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But if I might miss a Saturday or I might miss a Thursday, please, please, please know that I am here and know that I will get it to you guys as soon as possible. But I'm not even gonna start with that. I'm gonna start with, I'm going to make sure to utilize my time correctly, make sure to use my um, new handy dandy iPad and my planners to really schedule my time out so that I can stay consistent because that is one of my huge goals this year. I wanna grow my YouTube. Um, my Instagram has grown exponentially last year. Like, I mean, it blew up and I put, it's because I put a lot of work into it, so it did blow up. So I wanna put that same energy into my YouTube um, just because I feel like this is a different community here and this is a different type of interaction. So I'm excited to do that and I'm excited for your help, please. Um, and I'm gonna be more present for y'all. So thank you so much for all of you who have already subscribed and thank you for those of you who have already shared this channel. Um, I do get, like see the comments like, oh, I'm here via so-and-so and I'm here via so-and-so. Actually, that brings me back to Janae. Um, she is, oh, 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 not me. I'm about to cry almost instantly because this year, you know, another goal, it wasn't a goal. I should say another outlook I have is on um, who I invite into my life and, uh, and how I allow people to show up for me and wanting not just a whole bunch of friends, but I want people who feel like family to me and I want people who are going to bring deeper meaning to my life and deeper connections with one another and she has really been one and i just want to like give her her flowers <clears throat> where everyone else can see because she really means a lot to me and you know for us to never have actually like met in person but <clears throat> for us to be able to share with each other the, the the way we have like that was too good let's get the bell Purr. Like our stories with one another, like what we're trying to get to and trying to get through. Um, it's just been a real help. It's been like, I feel like we've been holding each other's hand without us like really like, again, physically being in the same place. And she just instantly like, just feels like a sister to me. Like I could literally like call her and talk about whatever, like, or we're like sometimes we're literally talking on like 15 different platforms at once. Like she'll, say good morning on Instagram, I respond on text and then we're on TikTok and then we're on DMs. Like we're literally, we, we'll talk through like everything. And I think we just added Twitter for each other. So it's just getting crazier and crazier. But like, you know, I want for all of us to have friendships like that. Um, and I just feel like towards the end of last year into this year, I really do have a, a group of women in my life now that, you know, I don't know what I would do. I, I literally don't know what I would do, where I would be without that type of support. Like I'm thinking, you know, just three women in particular, like, you know, um, just wow. Like I just, again, you think this is what friendships are supposed to look like because you watch Bridesmaids and you, or you watch whatever, whatever. But I understand how realistic, I guess, the friend circle is like on Insecure. They're all in different places. Like my friends are literally in different, like Texas, New York, Atlanta. Like they're just nowhere near me, but we just have such a different bond now. Uh, the things I value in the friendships are so much different than like when I was like, you know, like fresh out of college or maybe even like two years ago. Like you just really feel like, oh, you didn't check up on me this week. So like, is something going, like it just, those things like literally don't matter to us anymore. The things that we're like, that are important to us, the things that we really do check on each other about and when we check on each other and how we check on each other. I mean, whoa, like, it's really crazy to see. Like, it's really crazy, it, it is. Like people just tell you after 30 things change. After 30 things really change. After kids, things really change. After you've been through certain situations, things really change. Your outlook and your, your your interactions with people, places, and things are completely different. And I just, 
you know, I started off the video with wishing you guys abundance. I mean, this is a place where I wish everyone abundance in as well, an abundance of meaningful connections, an abundance of meaningful friends in your life, persons in your life. I'm wishing charcuterie boys and wine on all my bossy bougie bitches this year. I'm wishing good friend groups. I'm wishing prosperity. I'm wishing good jobs. I'm wishing vacations and good men on y'all bitches. I fuck with y'all. I love y'all. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed my 2021 year in review and welcome to 2022 with me, my chapter two. I really hope that you guys stay around, subscribe, hit that bell so you know when I post more videos and you guys get to see what's going on in my chapter two. It's super exciting. I promise. Subscribe and like this video. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Oh